Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. A big thank you for all your lovely messages that have been coming in. I am okay. I must admit, though, just when I thought I had kicked COVID's ass, the pesky cough, lack of appetite and fatigue kicked right back in today. But hey, I lost five pounds this week, so every cloud, right? And we do have a daily tech podcast to broadcast. And today's guest is an absolute diamond and certainly put a smile on my face. He is Patrick Comer from a company called Lucid. And he was just one of those guys I could talk to for hours with. And over the last week, people have said, Neil, you just want to walk away and take it easy. And let's be honest, I am taking it easy. I'm sat in a chair having a great conversation with someone. So I I don't really class that as hard work, especially when we had such a great guest in Patrick today, who is a real diamond geezer, as they say over here. And he has also a very keen eye for tech equipment too, but I will save that for another episode. But Patrick is a seasoned entrepreneur who founded this New Orleans-based company over a decade ago with a simple mission to solve the market research industry's most pressing issue with technology. And that issue is the need for a centralised source of data samples. And I cannot tell you how much that is needed, especially if I look at, let's say, this podcast, where essentially I record an audio file, post it onto the internet through an RSS feed. That RSS feed will go through Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and around 20 different podcasting players. But who listens? That's when things start to get murky. That data is pretty hard to track down. So under Patrick's helm, Lucid has evolved to democratise market research through programmatic technology, effectively helping global brands such as Spotify, so we're talking big names here, understand changing consumer sentiments and how best to market to these new personas. At the heart of that, of course, we have data. And Patrick also coined the term ResTech. And ResTech is a comprehensive term for the software and tools that help platforms, agencies and brands target and deliver and analyse their insight initiatives. And today, that business far exceeds over 10 million in annual revenue. And as regular listeners will know, I'm passionate about getting tech success stories on here from outside of Silicon Valley. So I also want to explore and learn more about the tech scene in Louisiana. So that's more than enough scene setting for me. We're now at the point where I'm going to ask you to buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to the Big Easy in New Orleans so we can speak with Patrick about all this and much more. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Patrick. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are? And what you do? Well, my name is Patrick Comer. I'm the founder and CEO of Lucid, which is a technology company based out of New Orleans, Louisiana, which is, of course, not the norm. Uh, so very excited to be on the show today. And, you know, Lucid is a what we call a research technology platform, shortened for ResTech, of course, nowadays. But we really make it easy for whether it's a company or a brand or even a listener to really engage with their target audience and learn more about whether it's a product, a bit of media, a campaign, just learn more about what your users think and feel about your product. And what really stood out for me, one of the reasons I invited you on the podcast today is how you're using technology to enable a deeper understanding of the sentiments, motivations and behaviours of target demographics. But can you tell me more about the kind of problems that you solve for your customers and how essentially you're, you're changing the way the world's, the world's answers are actually discovered? Because it's an incredibly cool angle. Well, what's going on is that, especially during COVID, and I imagine you've heard this a lot during some of your tech talks, how things have radically shifted. But most businesses today are trying to make decisions very, very quickly because the world is changing so rapidly. Their customers, even their clients, even their vendors are changing their businesses, their behaviors and their attitudes almost on a daily or weekly basis. And so engagement with your target audience, whether that's a demographic audience or a behavioral audience, just really matters in decision making. And not only your ability to engage to get those insights, how fast you can get those insights, how fast you can get those answers really matters in your ability to be reactive to the rapidly world that's changing around us. 
And so what we've discovered is that through technology, our customers can now make decisions faster, which give them a competitive advantage on how quickly they move and navigate these challenging times. And I'm curious, a question I've got to ask is, what is the inspiration behind the company and the, the story behind this mission that you find yourself on there to solve the market research industry's most pressing issue, the the need for a data centralized source of data sample? Because I feel there's got to be a story there somewhere. Well, the real story is that I was starting my entrepreneurial journey in New York City during the dot-com bubble the late 90s, early 2000s, when Silicon Alley was the thing, and saw the inception of some of the first uh, called digital media companies that were really trying to understand how do you place advertising online, companies like Razorfish or Avenue A. And these companies were trying to solve how do you take an offline advertising problem and move it online. So I saw the inception of those companies and some of those new business models in particular was now called an exchange where it's really easy to buy and sell impressions. For example, one of the largest independent exchanges is uh, the Trade Desk uh, based out of New York. When I got into the market research industry, I realized that we had a similar challenge where there were tons of surveys being done, literally on the phone, if you remember when people would call you during dinner to ask you questions about a political campaign or something else, and realized that entire process needed to move online. And there was that missing business model how do we provide an exchange that's so really simple for anyone who wants to ask a question to get the right answers from the right audience? And so we built that new business model, that exchange, that marketplace, so that the industry around us could also move and innovate and scale quickly as well. So not only do we have this like ecosystem of companies around us, we're integrated with tons of different partners that make it really simple and really fast to engage with your audience. And just to help bring to life just how much you've achieved here with this technology, can you share how you're effectively helping global brands such as Spotify understand the changing consumer sentiments and also how to best market to those no, new personas? Because it, it feels like a real game changer there. It definitely can be a game changer, not just from larger players like Spotify, but even for yourself, if you want to ask questions of your own audience, how do I actually engage with the people who are listening whether it's to this podcast or to the, the uh, campaigns or advertisements that I'm running out there. So the game-changing um, product for us is really around ad effectiveness so that we can actually serve up the people that have been exposed to a particular campaign. So whether it's Spotify or Hulu or any type of media company, they're really interested in how well their campaigns, their brands are actually being perceived in the market. A great example would be uh, political campaigns. Actually, in the United States uh, during the presidential election, every single demographic was being served up a unique campaign message by all the different campaigns that were running. And the only way to do that is if you can test those campaigns and those messages at scale and in real time. And then once those messages are out in the market, receive feedback from the people that are hearing them. And are you landing in the right way? Is that message getting someone to go out to vote, getting them to think about voting for your, your, uh, your politician, the person you're promoting. So it's changed for marketers, for campaigns, for anyone who has any kind of message of trying to get out into the market, is that's really simple and really easy now to get feedback from the people that are hearing those messages. And that can provide a huge value for someone running any type of campaign because they may want to change it or they may want to grow the size of the campaign based upon the feedback they're given. So it's a really unique proposition where ad effectiveness of the ability to get brand messaging or brand measurement of these campaigns used to be a slow, weeks long or even months long process. And now it can literally happen uh, almost in real time to, to change how you're approaching the, the market. And at the beginning of our conversation a few moments ago, you did mention the phrase res tech. And I, I yeah. believe it's a, a phrase that you've coined yourself. But for any listeners outside of the industry, can you just expand on exactly what res tech is? So res tech is, of course, short for research technology. And we play a card, whether you call it from ad tech, martech, fintech, it's all, you know, it's all basically the same story, which is yeah. when you look at a broad industry, it can be seen as growing slowly. Uh, take advertising grows at like six to eight percent globally per year. But within that sector, 
there's a subset of technology-driven innovative companies that are growing at a much faster rate that are really driving the innovation and technology disruption of the space, where the excitement really is. And we recognize that it wasn't just Lucid as a company, but also a number of companies around us in our ecosystem that really were forming that innovation, that drive for change in the market research or the insight space. And we recognize that we need to name that and own that disruption and that change. And ResTech was a part of it. And to be clear, it wasn't just us um, claiming that name ResTech. We were part of it. Several different companies who came forward and said, we need to really talk about the exciting change and growth that's happening in this sector of the industry. And so ResTech was born in order to start telling that story. And on that story, what kind of value do you see ResTech providing marketers? And do you have any examples just just so that uh, would possibly bring it to life for people listening? Well, talking about value, part of ResTech, recently we had three significant deals that have given people some highlight of what's going on in the market. One is that there was the Qualtrics IPO, uh, Qualtrics based out of Provo, uh, well worth over $24 billion in the most recent IPO. Another company, a peer of ours called Scent, based out of Stockholm, just went public within the past few weeks, uh, well over a billion dollars in value. And most recently, Brandwatch uh, was acquired by Sizian for like uh, $450 million. So there's a lot of activity happening in this ResNex space for billions of dollars. When it comes down to specific examples, most of what we're providing is the ability for a marketer to make fast decisions. Because if you're in, a, in an organization, in a company, oftentimes you're brought questions, should we go with product A or product B, message X or Y? Or there's a strategic question that you want feedback for a meeting or even a board meeting that day. And the, the old thinking is that research or surveys or insights is slow and expensive. It takes hundreds of thousands of dollars and takes weeks or months to get an answer. The simple reality now is that through ResTech, you can get answers to your most strategic questions, the things that can most define how you move as an organization. You can get those answers today. And the cost structure is very different than what it used to be before. So suddenly we're democratizing access to insights. We're democratizing the ability and the speed for anyone to really make strategic questions quickly. And I think it was what a few years ago, the phrase of uh, there's no words more damaging to any business than, but we've always done it this way. And I think yeah, yeah. that that is more true now than ever before. And it seems that you guys are moving away from that old school of old school way of thinking. So is there any other uh, examples you can share of how you're leveraging ResTech at Lucid and how it's a big part of, uh, of your ethos and what you do there? Well, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, we built within Lucid the ability to ask one single question to over 150 and 200 people in like an hour, almost as a test case for some of our early capabilities. And it was our engineering team, of course, that did this first because they really had to answer the question, is a hot dog a sandwich or not? And that's a really burning question for most engineering teams out there. But once we started showing this to our customers, we realized there's a whole market here where people want answers to questions very, very quickly. And so not only is a hot dog, a sandwich or not interesting, but we found out that in the, uh, let me start that over. We found that in the news cycle for uh, blogs, for example, that people would have questions in the morning for a story that they were writing and they want data or answers to help inform that story by the afternoon. So for example, there may be news about a certain crime that happened in their area and wanted to get feedback from the, from their, basically their listeners on where they thought that was a big deal or how big of a deal it was So they went to press, as it were, to print that afternoon, they would have some data to back it up. And so we found that even just one question can be very powerful in terms of how you inform your audience as to what's going on. Yeah, I must admit, I've been that guy as well, searching for those sources for the the big news story of the day. Uh, Every single day it happens, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And also just to talk about the scale of what we're talking about here, I think it's worth highlighting that Lucid has produced more than 180 billion impressions for numerous customers. And a a lot of those are big household names and global brands. But I've got to ask, what has been your proudest moment or or biggest achievement at Lucid, would you say? So I would say my proudest moment is not a singular moment. Yeah. but really the work of the team over the past 12 months. 
And when I think about how deep people had to dig in in very tough times where suddenly we were all quarantined, suddenly people were working at home with their kids at home in a, in a house that was not prepared for work in the first place. Um, the amount of effort and energy required of the team was just significant and amazing. So I, honestly, my proudest moment is the past 12 months, just having the team come together and really work together, not just as business professionals, but as human beings, really being, uh, I guess the right words are sympathetic and empathetic with each other in ways that we just didn't have to be before. Um, so that's probably the proudest uh, uh, series of time we've ever had together. Um, in terms of moments that are professionally exciting, you know, a couple of years ago, we closed a $60 million Series B growth round with our partners at Guidepost Growth Equity. And that was significant, not just because we were financing the growth of the business, because it was the largest venture capital deal that we'd seen in the state of Louisiana for a decade. And it was really a signal to the local community here that the work that they've invested for the past 10 years or so, not just with Lucid, but with other technology firms is paying off, that we were building a technology ecosystem in New Orleans in the state of Louisiana that was actually going to work. And that's an important story as people are thinking about where is Silicon Valley, where is technology innovation today? And the simple reality is it can be anywhere and everywhere. And so the proud moment for me of raising the capital is not to say, yay, we've done something successful for Lucid, but for the ecosystem around us that is looking for us to be leaders in technology innovation in in the state of Louisiana. Yeah, I completely agree with you there. And I think at the heart of everything, it's always people. And I always say at the end of every episode that technology works best when it brings people together. And that's, again, exactly what you guys are doing. But looking at the road ahead, is there anything in particular that, that really excites you about the future of ResTech and indeed technology in, across the entire industry? I have to say I'm more excited now that I've been in a few years about the future of Lucid and the future of ResTech. For years, we were trying to convince companies to take on this new thesis that insight should be fast and easy. And As you said, there are a lot of companies who don't want to change. They want the status quo. Before COVID really started, we were starting to see companies move faster. Past 12 months, the the enormous rush of companies adopting our products, but also our ethos has really scaled up dramatically. What that means is that the insight space, the ResTech space is going to grow at an incredible pace for many years on a go forward basis mainly because people have realized that it is easy. It is simple for your questions, your surveys to be answered now in a scale and a size that was never before possible. And it's true that Lucid has over 180 billion data points on individuals that we've collected through surveys over time. And it is true that millions of people a day engage with Lucid to to answer surveys around advertising campaigns, political campaigns, or just products. But that scale is only going to increase as everyone realizes it's simple. And our mission is to democratize data collection so that any company or any individual anywhere on the planet can ask anyone else on the planet any question and get it answered for insight. And that capability, whenever you have a question to get it answered, not just through search, but if it's a unique question that's never been answered before to get that one answered as well, that's a unique capability and a unique, unique value for, we'd like to say, the entire global population. So we're asked all the time, how big is your market? How big could this get? And I always say that our market size is the sum of all human curiosity. Love that. And I also love the fact that you're a, t- a huge tech company in Louisiana. I'm curious. I'm always, I'm always keen to get uh, tech startup stories and tech scenes that shared outside of Silicon Valley. Is, is there a, a, a tech scene over there in New Orleans? Absolutely. As I, as I suggested before, we've been building a technology scene here for more, more than a decade. Yeah. Um, and what's unique about Louisiana is that if you know Mardi Gras, if you know the Big Easy, there's a different culture down here in this state than there are other parts of the country. And it was really for me starting a new company in Louisiana because I had done all my previous entrepreneurship in California, New York, and London. So I wanted to make sure that the culture of 
Louisiana, the culture of Mardi Gras is embedded in the startup as well. And how do you do that successfully where the idea of laissez-faire, the idea of relationship mattering more than anything else, be the focus of the culture of the startup as well. So I wanted to show that you could build a category defining company in Louisiana, but it also could be built anywhere. And that's what's I think is exciting about technology generally is that in the past, you've had so much startup, not only companies, but capital focused on California and New York, maybe London as well. But now the simple reality is that you can do this anywhere, especially with the access to remote talent that's available today. I expect that over the next 10 years, we're going to see extraordinary companies be built in all parts of the globe we just weren't expecting before. And that's exciting for those local communities because it means that that uh, base, uh, what is called a tax base or this community value is being built everywhere and not just focused on one place. I completely agree. It's incredibly cool and a mouthwatering prospect. And for anyone that would love to explore any of the topics we've explored today, uh, whether it be ResTech or the work that you're doing at Lucid, what would be the best way to find you online and, and also contact your team if they're left with any questions? Well, for me, uh, it's very easy on Twitter. It's just uh, handle is Comer Patrick. It's very straightforward. As for Lucid, it's uh, a unique uh, URL. It's luc.id. So literally, it's luc.id is, is, the, is the Lucid URL that we work with. Uh, but of course, I'd be very excited to engage with any of your listeners about any of these topics. Well, there's so much I've loved about you listening to your story today, from starting on that simple mission in New Orleans to solving the industry problem to then producing more than 180 billion impressions for numerous customers and also producing, I think, something like 3 billion surveys that analyze general population audiences. All incredible, but at the heart of all that, it's people. And that is something that I always champion on this podcast too. But a big thank you for taking the time to come on here and share that with me today, Patrick. Thank you. Absolutely, Neil. And if you ever need help understanding your audience and how they're engaging with your podcast, just let us know what we can do. I just love how passionate Patrick is that ResTech has the power to provide marketers with that clear roadmap to success. And it helps marketers remain on the pulse of their customers' changing sentiments so that they can understand what it is that makes them tick, what they care about, and how best to appeal to them through personalized or more targeted messaging. And he also very kindly took the time to help me try and better understand who you are, my audience. So at Lucid, they strike me as a tech company that is always looking at what's next and what today's consumers need to know all by utilizing ResTech to provide clarity into thoughts opinions and feelings of the world incredibly cool right and like i said in the podcast lucid has produced more than 180 billion impressions for numerous customers and 3 billion surveys incredible stats and i cannot thank patrick enough for taking the time to come on this podcast and talking about it all in a language that everyone can understand kudos to you patrick and for anyone listening if this is your area of expertise you've you've heard me and patrick talk today now it's your turn i'd love to hear your thoughts if you've got any other opinions or insights or experiences you'd like to share email me now techblogwriter at outlook.com my website is techblogwriter.co.uk you can get me on twitter linkedin etc just at neil c hughes But it's time for me to up my fluids and have another little old man nap in the chair. What's become of this Daily Tech Podcaster, hey? (laughs) But I will return tomorrow, so a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.